Hey, everyone. How you doing, man? This is Share Beer 343 uh, with Joe D and Mark. And uh, how you doing, Mark? I'm okay. For Tuesday, right. I'm surviving. <laughs> yeah, and, and me too as well. It's uh, an hour later um, for yeah. the show, I think, right? Is mm -hmm. Well, no, it's the same time for me. It's an hour later for you. Yeah, yeah. It's an, yeah. Hour, an hour more sleep for me, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's funny, huh? It didn't. It didn't affect you. Your time changes. <laughs> yeah, my time don't change, and it's an hour more sleep for me. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That uh, nice. yeah, that that works out pretty good for me. I was able to uh, take that hour and actually get some stories together, and uh, cool. so. Some interesting stories. There ain't too much beer news happening or anything, but we do have some interesting stories to talk about, of course. Uh, any any cool beers or anything new this week? Oh, man. I've got one of the best beers ever right here. Red <sighs> Star, Green Label. Look at that. Oh, 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 it's a king yeah. can. A Heineken king can. Wow. How big is that? Is six, uh, 22, 16? It's imported. Uh, let me see. I got this for two dollars and forty nine cents. Probably some odd size, fourteen maybe or something. No, it's a it's one pint eight ounce. So yeah, it's a twenty four ounce can. Twenty four ounce, ounce can. can. Yeah, and I'm gonna pour it in a quality New Belgium uh, glass. So that'll probably <laughs> make it even better. Yeah. But, and, and, and I'm having uh, some filtered Phoenix water in a QT cup. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. Yes. So. Uh, sure. Hmm? You, have, you have a lot of quick trips in Phoenix, or oh yeah, they're all over the place. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, they're great. Corner here, it seems like. It love quick trips, man. Yeah, I can see yeah. right through this beer. That's how good it is. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I feel sophisticated and European now. Yeah, is, is is for some people that's pinky out craft beer right there. That's I mean that's that's just now this is okay. It's in a can, so it shouldn't be skunked, but it's still got that skunky kind of. I, I think they brew it that way. I think yeah, they literally they literally do. They they literally brew it. They they expect that skunk taste out of that mm -hmm. green bottle. It's like Miller, you know, regular yeah. Miller. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, they they. There, you know, yeah, because it, it, you would think, right, that mm -hmm. they would brew it a particular way, and then it would skunk in the in the bottle. But yeah, they're, they're, they brew it to be uh, specifically skunky like that. I don't know, man. It, it he, uh, Heineken's not my thing. It just ain't. You know, no, what I'm I saying? haven't had one of these in years, and I saw one in the grocery store. It's like two fifty. I'm like, yeah, you know what the heck? Why not? Right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. A much better macro beer after this, though. Yeah. See, I now I did have some good beers this week. On uh, well, the weekend specifically, I'm mm -hmm. looking through my Untapped account here. Okay. And um, let's see. I had <clears throat> me run down my. It's funny to run down my weekend on Untapped. Mm -hmm. um, you're like, man, what a waste of a weekend I had. Look yeah, at all yeah. the time I spent. You know, it's okay. So it's uh, it, it, speaking of poor choice of beers here. So we got one Miller Light after another, and then uh, I had uh, one of the Shipyard uh, Smash Smashed Pumpkins. Okay, uh, yeah, that's a good beer. beer. That's a damn good beer. And very good beer. Yep, nine nine percent ABV. Um, mm -hmm. Really good, really, really good. It 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 is. Uh, as far as pumpkin beers go, it's like mm -hmm. more. Um, it it does have some spice to it, but it, mm -hmm. it it's well done. And I'll just okay. say that it, it is well yeah. done. I've had that. It's been a while since I've had it, but uh, I do remember it as being a pretty decent beer. I had a pumpkin left over from that sun, a six pack that I had. Okay. Uh, so I I I drank that, and you know it was a little better. Uh, this time than it was uh, when I initially bought it. Um, and you bought that was a couple months ago. I, you know, I think so. You know, or at least a, at least a month ago, at yeah. least. Okay. Um, and then I had another one of those cinnamon horchata ales from Blue Moon. About the same result. <laughs> did you buy a six pack of that? I did. Yeah. How many are so, left? 
Four? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there is. Pro- well, no, there's three. Okay. Yeah, I have three left. Uh, yeah, because when I was initially reviewing it, I screwed up, so I had to, re- I had to have another one. Uh-huh. So I actually had two for the review. And, you know, they're just – I think what Zach said is just true. Like, it's they're, – they're, they're, you know, everything they make is just – it's going to have that – it's, it's just going to be true to their original Blue Moon, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right, Zach said it was well. they make all these different varieties but everything is so subtle you know unless you knew that it had a different name and it's supposed to taste different you probably never know the difference from the regular blue moon and then i had a revisit to uh santan uh brewing i didn't go to the brewery but i just had a revisit okay actually while i was at uh olive garden and oh, okay. uh a brew they had they call the devil's ale and it's their um uh pale ale Okay. And and uh, really good, really nice, and uh, I'm gonna say sweet, but it's not sweet, you know. But it's citrusy, more of a okay. citrusy pale ale, not so much of a hoppy pale ale. Okay. Uh, real okay. nice uh, citrusy taste in there, fruity taste. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, really well done beer. Had uh, cool. a few of those <laughs> <laughs> while having an endless pasta bowl at uh, at uh, Olive Garden. Hmm. You know, this was a this week or last week was the twentieth anniversary or twenty fifth anniversary of the endless pasta bowl. Is it really? Yeah, I saw a commercial on that, and I was like, "Huh, that's interesting." So I actually, hell, that I should have earned something for that, right? Because yeah. I actually had a pasta bowl on the anniversary. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of pasta bowls, hello, but on the anniversary, oh, have of, another uh, pasta bowl for the anniversary. Yeah, have another one. <laughs> and then what's cool too is you can order the uh, endless meats too. So you, uh, oh, okay. yeah, you, you can order a meat and it's extra, but then you can get that meat on whatever. So if you order, you know, meatballs with your spaghetti, mm-hmm. then you can get you can keep getting meatballs. You know. Okay. So. Hmm. Cool. I haven't, I haven't had a I haven't had an Olive Garden pasta bowl in a while, but uh, I used to, I had, to tear through them, man. I <clears throat> I hadn't been to uh, uh, and the bartender might have talked me into going there now. So we'll we'll see if I keep going because uh, mm-hmm. they they were they're really cool in there every time I go. So and I, I might just start <clears throat> making that a regular deal. I took Uber. Uh, oh, okay. th- this weekend as well. I never used Uber. So for four Uber trips, let me see. I spent, let me see. I can tell you, I, I have my calculator right here. What? Oh, shoot. What did I spend? I, I think it was 20 bucks, 22 bucks. Okay. Uh, something like that on, on, uh, four Uber rides. Okay. Which, which weren't That's that far. Bad. It was, uh, let me see. It was. I, I do want to talk about that for just a second because I had never used it. Okay, so you know, I I, I've, I've still never used Uber. I did, did, yeah, that was my, yeah. See, one trip cost me four eighty, and another trip cost me six 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 dollars mm-hmm. and sixty six cents, mm-hmm. and then uh, another trip for four eighty and another trip for six twenty. Hmm. <clears throat> so, okay. and uh, how far? How far was it? How far a trip? Yeah, let, let's see. This one was two point uh, two seven miles. Okay. Uh, this one here was a point eight miles. All right. Uh, and then another one. Let's see, two point nine nine miles, and then another probably under a mile trip. Yeah, but point nine okay. three miles. Yeah. So. Okay. But it, it's pretty nice. You just set up your account. Yep. And and uh, once you set it up, but especially for me with the iPhone, I just hooked it to my uh, Apple Pay, mm-hmm. and so it just goes right to your credit card. You know, I mean, it don't get no easier than that. Mm-hmm. It it'll show you uh, uh, a picture of the driver and mm-hmm. what it'll tell you what car he's going to be in, and you just okay. kind of look for, look for that dude. And some of them will call you or text you even. Okay, so I'm on my way, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, or you know, uh, you, you know where exactly? Because I'm in a hotel, so they're like, where exactly are you? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And 
you know, it was pretty smooth, man. Some of them, uh, one dude, he had a little basket of little candies, mints for you. You know oh, what I'm cool. saying? So, so what was the nicest car you what what uh any u- nice Uber cars? You, you know the, the the one guy had a uh uh Chevy Equinox, believe it or not. It was okay. it was brand new. I mean it's you know I mean, it's pretty nice, you know. Yeah. It, it it is kind of cool. Like when I was at the Olive Garden, I called the Uber to to leave the Olive Garden and uh you know they show up right at the door. Mm-hmm. And the dude's opening the back door for you and everything. You know what I'm saying? You feel like a, you know, like the man. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. There was a, a line of people waiting out there outside the off garden, and you're mm-hmm. some dude shows up. You just get in the back door. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> people look at you. You take it off. It's kind of cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was the same thing uh, the next day, leaving the bar. It was the, the same thing. You know, they mm-hmm. they show up and there's people outside the bar. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. <laughs> So it's kind of, you know, mm-hmm. you get a little bit of that treatment too. It's kind of nice. Yeah. No, it's, uh, we take cabs every once in a while, but most of the trips we take, we're, we're out. So we always rent a car because we're, you know, you know, our trips, we drive all over, yeah. you know, we get one place yeah. and, you know, see the whole state in two seconds. And then... <laughs> yeah. And then in your case, you kind of have a built in DD. So, yeah, I do. You know, yep. I do. So... I do have a designated driver, although she doesn't, she doesn't like to, uh, admit that but you know, <laughs> but... yeah so so you know for 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 those of us that that you know go out so i would de- now for me i'll probably just drive myself somewhere but it i wouldn't hesitate if i were already somewhere and mm-hmm. i had a little too many i would i wouldn't hesitate to go ahead and just call the uber and then oh, the yeah. next day call the uber again to get my vehicle you know what I'm saying? I, I, That's a smart, and I think a lot of people do that. I mean, and it, yeah. it's it is just, I mean, you know, that six, fifteen, twenty, thirty, even you know, even if you like live out in the burbs and you drive downtown and you had a few too many beers, that little bit that it costs you to to take Uber back is right. nothing compared to the mayhem oh. you're going to get if you get stopped. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And it's just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. You've got so many choices now. Where you don't have to now, make, it, make the bad decision some, and drive home. Yeah. Now, immediately after your trip, you have <clears throat> the opportunity to to rate your driver and then uh, comment. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I, I wish there was a way that you could tip because I'm you. I'm really used to tipping a driver. Oh, you, you know can't what I'm tip? saying? You can't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm four trips into this stuff, so okay. if someone watching this can comment or something and 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 if there's a way to tip let me know because i felt like awful just like someone earning their fee you know just yeah their... yeah and i don't what do they get paid do they get paid like 60 or 70 percent or something like that i kind of tried to broach that subject a little bit the one guy that had the equinox just just told me that he gets paid pretty well he's like mm-hmm. you know I, hell he says i got this new equinox and then the one guy uh told me that uh what and 15 months no mm-hmm. no yeah, less than that it was nine months or something like that he's put seventy thousand miles on his vehicle so so yeah. he uh he's you know, full, he, he must be a full-time driver then because that, yeah, yeah, that, he, he, that's, he, that's more than you put on your vehicle <clears throat> he quit um he said he quit his job and, and, and that's what he does this is but we didn't have long enough trip he seemed like he would have told me some details but mm-hmm. we didn't have like a long enough trip you know yeah, yeah. To to cover much, so mm-hmm. I mean, you, you think about my longest trip was two point two miles, so it was like you know, you know, it's not three or four or five minutes, maybe six. Minutes, yeah, yeah, it's not you know, because I I am in an area where there's a lot of stuff right here, so mm-hmm. um, yeah, there was. I thought, well, you know, let me let me give it a try, you know, let me let me see what this is all about. You hear about it so much, and mm-hmm. and then they have different ones, so you can get like the regular Uber, which was what I used. You can get what the Uber XL. There's a Uber SUV. There's a Uber mm-hmm. uh, Black or something like that. I I don't know what all that stuff is. I, I would assume like the SUV is like if you literally want an SUV. Mm-hmm. Or, I think Black is more like a uh, like a limo service, supposedly. You know, like yeah. the higher end okay. cars. Okay. And a little bit more luxury oriented cars. So it just, you know, I, I wouldn't hesitate. I, I probably will just drive myself somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then if I do have too many, I wouldn't hesitate 
again to mm-hmm. to to use it you know but if if i didn't then i just drive my own ass home yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um but yeah it was it was it was it was great i mean what could I, there was nothing i could say bad about it that's for sure mm-hmm. so yeah. I, th- uh, I think uber drivers make a fair <laughs> amount of money especially if they're in downtown or uh, districts, you know, where there's bars, that type of yeah. stuff, they make a good living, you know, they, they get a lot of business just driving people, you know, that aren't just smashed, you know, just people have had a few beers or dinner and a few glasses of wine and are like, yeah, we're just going home and not driving. Well, the yeah. bar that I go to every Sunday, there's a couple of cats that, that and they, they, they're kind of the ones that kind of got me really thinking about it because they, they don't have a car. They don't have cars. Okay. So, it, 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 you know, they, they, that's all they use is Uber to get around anywhere they go. Oh, wow. They, they, they do not have a car. So, huh. you know, yeah, he kind of, the one guy, <clears throat> he does stuff online. He does, uh, I don't know, some kind of, I forget exactly what he does, but he does something online okay. and that's how he makes his living. So he works from home All right. and, and he had it all figured out, like how much Uber costs him a month. And mm-hmm. then how much it would cost him to maintain a vehicle, and you know, between the payment and the maintenance and all that, yeah. and then just <clears throat> just calling an Uber to go get the groceries or whatever. Yeah, no, you yeah. know, people, you know, even if your car is paid off, even if you don't have a loan on your car, you know, it's cars are expensive. I mean, they really are. You know, you got insurance and then just <clears throat> the use, and I mean, yeah, it ends up well, costing you a lot more than you think. Atlanta's got some pretty cheap gas. What are you paying for gas right now? What, what's your latest gas? Um, I've seen a few regular. Um, there's a few stations that are under two bucks a gallon right now for regular. Yeah. Uh, and for me, diesel is two thirty-five to two forty, which is which is pretty cheap. Okay, I was gonna say yeah. Pro- so we're we're, <clears throat> we're right about the same. Yeah, right now you can get uh, regular unleaded for a uh, buck uh, ninety-nine. Yeah, we're like dollar ninety nine to two oh nine. Yeah, as you get closer to the city, it goes up a little bit. But oh, okay. But, yeah, but, yeah, it's pretty much a buck ninety nine, a buck ninety five, and then yeah. um, diesel's definitely two thirty, mm-hmm. two twenty five. Some places. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is nice. Yeah, I, I put diesel every day, so I mm-hmm. <laughs> I definitely know what that price is. Um, let's see. Bum says uh, Christmas beers. Um, he's oh. seen Sierra Nevada celebration, of course. Now I, I mm-hmm. think we've all had that, but you know, every year could be yep. slightly different. I saw that that just hit the stores. I saw it last weekend. It was the first weekend I seen it in the store, so it probably came out you know, right around the end of October. I have to admit, I wasn't looking for it. I was. I, w- I did see that uh, Guinness you had. Mm. Um, that IPA. Yeah. yeah I, I was tempted to get it, but I'll just wait until uh, I'll, I have to make another trip to the store uh, closer to the weekend. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably mm-hmm. pick up a. I want to check that. It was uh, what the nitro nitro, nitro uh, IPA. Yep. Yeah. And I paid like yeah six ninety nine for a six pack. Although I thought they were twelve ounce cans, but like we found out last week, they're only eleven point <laughs> two. So eleven point two. I got yeah. off a little bit. I've still got two left. It's a decent beer. I mean, it's not. Yeah. You know, it's not spectacular but it's it's you know it's a, it's a nice mild ipa with the night the nitro is just cool you know it's like a keeps you entertained you pour the nitro and you gotta watch it all do its thing so now i did see the sam adams winter variety pack that he's mentioning i did see that mm-hmm. uh, i'm never really that fired up to go ahead and get that pack like every year you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i'm not uh, not that fired up about that yeah. uh I have been uh, trying different spirits. I okay. tried a new tequila. Um, did, did you happen to see that post? Yeah. <clears throat> that looked like you said it was so smooth. Oh, my God. It was. Oh, dude. But it you, was, but what was weird is it gave your location as Olive Garden. I'm like, Olive Garden serving tequila? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually where I had it. Yeah. The, the bartender. Seriously? Uh, they have tequila? Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, I was at the bar. Yeah, when I go to the Olive Garden, I sit at the bar. Okay. Yeah, they, they've wow. got a full bar. Yeah. So, would no. you like some tequila with your endless pasta bowl? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, – it, it, their wow. bar's legit. I mean, cool. they've got 
you can order anything at their bar. Like, well, maybe he's at the bar next to the Olive Garden, and it just gave them no, no, okay. that's in the Olive Garden. Yeah, wow. they've got some really fine spirits there. They've got some good, oh, cool, some good high end whiskeys. They've got some good high end tequilas. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, heck, my regular bar is just kind of like a sports bar. You know, okay. uh. And, and, and this one here, they've they've only they've only got one TV, but they pretty much always play sports on that one TV. They'll they'll tune it to anything you want, really. And then uh, it, <laughs> I mean, it's a legitimate full bar. And then on top of it, you're getting uh, pasta, you know, or Olive Garden, you know, whatever they serve. So you know, huh. um, not a bad deal, you know. I'd, oh yeah. It, and it's funny too. The minute I mention Olive Garden, some it, it, it is a lot like tequila, right? Some people are like, Olive Garden, yeah, you know, not bad. And then some people are like, Olive Garden, yeah, not really my thing, man. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's a, it is a lot like tequila because tequila is one of those drinks too, right? It's like, oh, tequila. You know, you mentioned tequila and they say it back to you. Mm-hmm. Tequila. In the way they say it, let you know that. If they like it or not, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they used to like it until they had one bad experience with it, and then they don't like it anymore. It's a lot like a pla- a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer, you know. I call it the memory beer. You know, we all have mm-hmm. memories of uh, Pabst from back in the day with yep. our fathers or whatever, grandfathers or some some kind of memory mm-hmm. attached to that beer. And tequila is a lot like that, right? You see people like if they're leaning forward, they take a deep breath. Oh, to keep... <laughs> yeah. and you could just see the memories in their head just rolling. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a there's a tape like, in their all head. All the stream just... of memories, and they're like fil- trying to. Th- <laughs> what should I filter out? What shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah it's been what... long enough for me to disregard this bad experience <laughs> and to go to this other good experience. You know, I don't know for me, you know, if it's in a good margarita, I'm fine. But I've done tequila shots only a few times in my life. And the last time I did it was probably 25 years ago. And I don't think I'll ever do tequila shots again. Yeah, and there, if there was. Good, if it's in a well-made margarita, I'm fine with that. But, well, this was a nice, healthy. And then what's great about having shots at a bar is I can order tequila chilled. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, I, I, I won't, with the good tequila especially, I won't have nothing with it. You know, no salt, no lime, none of that okay. stuff. Uh, but just to have it chill just makes it so much nicer and uh nice double shot, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, you just, whew, and that sucker just, it was like water, man. I mean, it was, no, I've, I've had some good tequilas and yeah, you're right. If, if it's well made, well, it's just like anything. It's like any, any spirit or beer. I mean, if you get a good quality one, you don't want to yeah. mess it up by putting anything extra on it, like a good bourbon, you don't. You just right. want to drink it maybe slightly chill, but you don't want to mix it with ice. You just want to try it straight up, you know, just get the full flavor and everything. Now, if you're drinking like bottom shelf <clears> stuff, you know, then yeah, put it in with some ice and add some Coke and you'll be good. But, you know, for. Now, my, my newly found Bud Guy is supposed to be getting me uh, a bottle of rye whiskey tonight uh, after the show. So. I don't know what kind or anything, so we'll see if it's if it's mm-hmm. well or if it's uh, you know a, a really good rye whiskey. So mm. looking looking forward to that. I haven't had a rye whiskey in a long time, actually. So yeah, well, there's some good ones. There are yeah. some good ones out there. I mean, it's amazing. You go into the um, you go into the liquor store and you you know got all the you know it was ten or fifteen years ago you, you had just basic stuff. Now you can go into all those sections. You know the whiskeys, the bourbons. Mm-hmm. Um, the tequilas, the vodkas. I mean, vodkas have gone crazy. There's so many craft vodkas. I can I can almost mention vodka to anybody, and and, and people seem to like it because they have a, a certain flavor or whatever that they like. Mm-hmm. There there's even people I've noticed in reviewing vodka uh, that um, show just so many different flavors. I I didn't realize there was that many. Personally, yeah. I mean, there's so many, and I mean, I guess vodka is really supposed to be almost flavorless you know it's just so, you know you, you distill it so many times it gets down to it's just like bare essence and then that what's that's what makes it good for adding all those flavors 
because right. then you're getting the true flavors, you know. So if you do like a blackberry vodka or something, you use real blackberries and you add it into the good quality vodka, it ends up being a really tasty, um, really tasty beverage. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now the the real only I could run down week eight um, of uh, the NFL, but there, you know, uh, there, there really wasn't. Uh, a lot of uh, games that I'm really that excited about. Of course, the Rams won. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta did lose. I'm sorry, my friend. And Steelers uh, lost too, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Steelers lost. You know, the Rams are kind of responsible for that because we put the hurting on uh, Roethlisberger for you. Yeah. And, and so that just kind of started the bad season. Now you've yeah. lost uh, your running back. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw a thing on the – where uh, Cleveland was supposedly they cheered when uh, when he got hurt. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty so now up. they're saying that you know they were out to, they were out to hurt him. You know. Oh, is, that's messed just, up. That's yeah, that is that's wrong. Yeah, the St. Louis we beat we beat the uh, San Francisco twenty seven mm -hmm. six, mm -hmm. and now they're benching Kampernick, Man, they they benched him. Oh they really? Made it, wow! Yeah, they made it official. They benched him. So, uh, so who's 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 their uh, second stringer? Oh, who is he? What's his name? I don't even know his name. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I just doesn't even doesn't even register. But yeah, they they benched him after that. So I I, I really don't know his name honestly, but uh, uh, I did I did hear that uh, when I woke up tonight. Uh, okay. And. Um, huh. Dallas lost, so it's a good week. Woohoo! Yeah, they did. They did and, lose. And let me tell you, I'm still keeping my eye on Oakland. They won again, and I man, Oakland's one of them sleepers. Man, they're 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 putting together some wins over there. They're finally turning it around. Uh, I'm not an Oakland fan. I'm not a Raider fan, but I, I I'm kind of one of those old schoolers that likes to see the Raiders do good. I kind of mm -hmm. oh, yeah. kind of grew up with uh, you, you know you you remember uh, Al Davis always saying, mm -hmm. you know, the Raiders that the NFL's better with the Raiders, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. So back back when they were in Oakland for the first time way back mm -hmm. then, you know, before he, when, did, when did he move him to LA? Was that like 80 Five eighty six, something like that. It was the mid eighties, I thought. Yeah, it, uh, it was a while ago. It, it was a while ago, very early eighties. Yeah. yeah, very, very early eighties. Uh, and then they they won the championship there. Mm -hmm. um, but it it was a while ago. Uh, Houston finally put together a win. Thank God mm -hmm. for that. Uh, they, yeah, I kind of been keeping an eye on them ever since that hard knocks. Uh, that you know they had the HBO series this year, mm -hmm. and the big game was Denver and Green Bay, and Denver just looked phenomenal. Yeah. Oh yeah, game. I watched. We watched the first half, and then we had to go to bed. But uh, they were they ended up what twenty nine thirteen or twenty nine fourteen yeah. or something like that. Twenty nine ten. Okay. And uh, I mean they they I mean they they just looked great, and they made. Uh, uh, What's his name from Green Bay? Uh, I mean, just look pathetic. I mean, he, they, needed, they were... he needed to do a double check discount. Double check, <laughs> double check yeah. his uh, skills. Though. Yeah, double yeah, he... check the skills exactly. Oh man, well you know Denver. That was um, what was that? That was like Pat Bowen night. They uh, they inducted Pat Bowen, you know, the owner of the Broncos for the last thirty years. It's got um, he's got Alzheimer's now. So oh. they put him in the, um, the, you know, the Ring of Fame or whatever. So they had all the old, you know, all the old Broncos players from the last 30, 40 years. You know, Tom Jackson was there. Mm -hmm. um, all those, all those old guys. So yeah, because that's why he wasn't on the broadcast because he was actually there. Tom Jackson. Yeah, they said that was the first time he'd missed like an ESPN broadcast in you know ever. Yeah, yeah. Him and it's been him and uh, uh, oh my god, how, how do you? Mm. What, what was that? What was his name? Not, not Berman. Uh, Berman, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the last they, years. I mean, yeah, I mean, they've been on there forever. They, they've been on. I, th I think he was one of the first players that mm -hmm. that, that went to broadcasting. Like yeah, that. he was on the um the late seventies on the Broncos. Remember the Orange Crush, yeah. like 77, yeah. 78, 79? He was he was on that team. So I mean, he's got to be. He's got to be close to sixty now. I mean, and he still looks good. I mean, he looks like he could literally go out on the field and 
probably still play. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't know about that, but he's I mean, he's in pretty good shape, though. Yeah, he he, he looks good for his age. I yeah, mean, I mean, uh, he, I hope he, I look uh, like that in eight years, nine years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Denver uh, remains undefeated, man. Seven and zero, and so does Cincinnati. Uh, you know who's who's really happy about that is Zach. I mean, Zach's probably just like thrills to death that Denver's still undefeated. I think Zach wanted to come on here and talk about it, but he he didn't want to, you know. He's still like, he's still so emotionally like happy about it that he just can't share. Yeah, he uh, he's a pretty subtle guy, so he doesn't want to brag too much about Denver, yeah, you know, Denver being undefeated. Yeah, you know, and they they beat Aaron Rodgers and all that. He, yeah. He's 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 pretty, you know, he's he's pretty. He doesn't want to yeah. brag too much, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. <clears throat> We do have uh, the only beer story I have, and I'll, I'll share the screen on this one. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get it up, uh, pull it up here. Let's see. Uh, is uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin has uh, his own craft beer now. Oh wow! Uh, What's it called? Stone Cold. It's called Skull uh, Broken Skull IPA. Broken Skull. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, this this is it. Looks like that's the bottle right there. So uh, you can see that Broken yeah. Skull IPA. I'm not, I'm not uh, seeing it. I want. Did you uh, click the share with everybody? But there we go. Oh yeah, he's yeah. He's looks like he's broke a few. One badass beer. There we go. Yeah, it's Al Segundo Brewing Company. So um, if you're anywhere near Al Segundo, um, there you go. And there. And they're at ESBC Brews on Twitter. So if you want to check them out, uh, you can you, Boston. Yeah. you can follow them. He's now looking it, pretty good, man. Look at him. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know how recent a picture that is, mm-hmm. but you know, I would imagine that it has to be fairly recent. You know, recent. You know, uh, you, you can imagine him one of the steroid boys. I can't imagine. Oh he didn't, yeah, he was it's right in the right in the. The wheelhouse of that generation, yeah. Yeah, so I can't imagine he didn't. I mean, they were all doing everybody, it right yeah, then. everybody, mid to late, it, early nineties. This is a story I thought you could relate to being in Atlanta, being in Houston. It was uh, a man was killed for grabbing the last piece of chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you know, if that's the last piece of chicken, you gotta announce your intentions. I mean, you know, that is. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, it says uh, five men had been making dinner and drinking in an apartment in, we- in Western Houston. Oh, that's uh, the drinking in an apartment. That's what caused it. You know. Yeah, and, it, and they make say, lime burritos or something. That, it, you know, hey, you, you got the last lime burrito and the last piece of chicken. Come on, man. Uh, really? Come on, man. You know. So yeah, they uh, said police uh, said that Rivera became angry when Gonzalez took the last piece of chicken. Oh man. You know, you know, you don't go to a man's house and take the last piece of chicken. No, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, if it, if you're at the man's house, the man gets the last piece of chicken. I mean, really. <laughs> if he picks in the chicken, he gets the last piece. And if he doesn't want it, then you can have it. <laughs> yeah. You don't take the man's last piece of chicken. There, there's there's chicken etiquette here, man. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you they, go, didn't read the owner's manual. <laughs> You know, like it, it's Chicken Wing Tuesday at, at at Mark's house, and you know I, I wouldn't go over there and take the last chicken wing, man. You know, it's well, like ask me first, I'll give it to you. But if you take it, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's on, son. I'm gonna bring yeah. it hurt. I'm gonna bring yeah. it hurt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So it's like, uh, yeah, it, you know, it took the last piece of chicken there, and. And yeah, it led to a fist fight, and then he he stabbed the guy. Oh. So uh, yeah, that, that's pretty hardcore right there. Um, yeah. There's a man who loves his chicken. Now th- this story right here, I thought was interesting because uh, uh, I guess Bluebell Ice Cream is expanding. It's uh, if I can get this ad clicked off here, a distribution in Texas and okay. now into Oklahoma. So they're they you know they are from Texas, so they're mm-hmm. expanding their distribution in Texas, and it's all from that 
uh, Listeria uh, contamination yep. crisis. Yeah. So they're back. They're they're trying to get that behind them. Yep. Uh, then they they resumed selling ice cream August thirty first. Yep. yep. In Houston yep. and in Austin. Uh, so they're they're, you know, they're they're trying to. I love their ice cream. Oh uh, yeah, it's it, very good ice cream. We get it here, and um, it it is good ice cream. And they started. It started, it hit the shelves. I mean, uh, uh, the shelves here. Yeah, like first week of September, maybe right around Labor Day, and uh, still see, it seem, seems to be selling pretty good. So they're they're back for the most part. Oh, so the, so they're back selling it where you're at too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a they have a plant in um, Alabama, somewhere around New Birmingham or Montgomery, Alabama, that kind of supplies Georgia, Alabama, and so they're uh, they're back on the store shelves. So. Yeah, I haven't seen them out here. I don't know where their plants would be over here. I mean, they're I think they're more southeast in Texas because okay. I I don't see them up. I didn't see them in Pittsburgh, uh, and I don't remember them in Chicago. So they're probably like you know Arkansas, Texas, ten, you know that that area. They're probably yeah. eastern Texas over to uh, over to the coast. So. Yeah, the <laughs> chicken etiquette 101. Yep. <laughs> chicken etiquette. I mean, yeah. Really. Uh, I mean, it, the last, last, I should teach that in school. Really. Dude, you don't take the last piece of anything at someone's house, right? That's like, right. you know, it's it's also Taco Tuesday, and, you know, you take the last taco at someone's house, you know, you could be, you, you know, someone could pick you out for that, man. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know. There you go. Oh. Now that's a revisit beer. Every once in a while, oh yeah, the, I gotta get a I gotta get a sixer of that and oh, yeah. and just to do they can that they don't can that do they? I haven't seen this in cans. I no. I picked up a six pack of this over the weekend at the grocery store. It was right next to the uh, well, not quite next, but I picked up the Heineken in this, and uh, the same this is area. much better than the Heineken. Yeah, and I haven't had this in a few years, but uh, it's not bad, you know. I mean it. <sighs> And you know, some people talk a lot of smack about me uh, still having some of the big macros, but no. uh, I mean, Michelob has never been a bad beer. No, no. I mean, and this was, you know, back in the day, like in the mid to late '80s. I mean, this was like the first macro craft beer. Really? Yeah. I mean, this was it was this thought was of macro. as as the as the better of the big macros, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It was the you know, um, but uh, did it have a slogan or anything? I don't remember uh, a particular like so. champagne of beers or anything like that. No, Michelob was no. I don't. All I can think is low and brow, but that's not that's not even Michelob. You know, tonight's kind of special. The beer will pour. Must be something more somehow. Yeah. Got to be low and brow, but that's not. Yeah. Good. I don't. I don't remember any fancy slogan or anything mm -hmm. for for Michelob, but. Uh, Nope. Yeah, they they were supposed to be one of the nicer uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's craft a, beers. Yeah, I mean it's it's a craft yeah, it's beer. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to drink it. That's for sure. No, and I had a I had a buddy that I worked with for years, and that that was literally all he would drink was the regular Michelob. That's okay. it, you know he was a diehard. You know now another thing I wanted to uh, uh, broach. Uh, oh. <laughs> No, he's right about that too. Oh, Mich oh Michelob Ultra. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's the worst thing Michelob's ever done. Yeah. For those of you that can't see it, uh, he, uh, Bum says in the in the Q and A here that sorry, Joe, Michelob Ultra is bad. So, um, yeah, I would have to I would have to agree with that. Yeah, it's it's not. But you know what? I see a lot of people order it too. A lot of oh. people order that. Um, yeah. Seems to be like tastes, I've I've had it a couple times and it there's nothing. Why even there's, drink it? Yeah, you there's know, nothing there. Just yeah. I mean, it's. I think that's exactly why they drink it. I, it. I think it's for because uh, I it, not not that it's that way, but I personally, when I go to the sports bar, mm -hmm. they have it on tap and. It it just seems like I always see ladies ordering it, and then, yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, I hate to generalize, but it is yeah, kind of a chick beer. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know it's, why. It's one of those, and I think that like some 
drinkers just don't like that that taste of that and it's kind of funny because you can't get them to drink what they would call a dark beer uh, which would be even one of those uh mm -hmm. amber box that they, they you know mm -hmm. they will not drink it and you're like god that's it's odd because that that you know those pilsners are those light lagers are just skunky kind of a little bit and that's yeah, probably that's... what you don't like i can give you something maltier and sweeter with more taste and and you'd probably like it if you just give it a chance oh, you know? so but... it's so funny my um my uh parents you know they're my mom is now 80 but i mean no so she came my parents came of age in the 50s uh -huh. You know, and all the beer that was in the 50s was just, just that, you know, the Pilsner macro, really yeah. tasteless crap. So that's her whole, she's not a drinker, so her whole experience with beer is just that crap beer from the 50s, pretty much. And I, I, I put a, uh, uh, I gave her a taste of a, uh, a Russian Imperial Stout a few, <laughs> a few Thanksgivings ago with the turkey. Well, that's... And she's like, oh, this is, but this is strong, but it tastes really good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you went from crap beer to like 10.7% wow. Russian. Yeah. Beer. She goes, I can taste the chocolate and the coffee. And yeah, like, okay, there we go. That's a pretty hardcore adjustment right there. That's pretty, it's a pretty well, she had literally like, like half an ounce of it, but she, yeah. she's like, well, that's pretty good. That's a lot better. That's not really. Is that beer? I was like, oh yeah, it's beer. It's just like real beer, not that stuff. That <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ice, you know? yeah, yeah. It's it's not something that you literally have to serve at thirty two degrees so you don't <laughs> taste it. You know, and it's true because I, you know, I I'll revisit Miller Lite. I'd pretty mm -hmm. much revisit that every Sunday because that's mm -hmm. what's on special over there, mm -hmm. um, and. I mean, the warmer that stuff gets, forget about it, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, you've got to have it like we're right out of the as cold as possible. Now, one thing I'd like to I'd like to uh, ask this question: What does? Okay, let me let me think of how to ask it for a second. Uh, what does to you? What does I love beer mean? Does it does it mean? Uh, I love beer for some people means I drink a lot of beer, but I drink macro and I, I'll drink an 18 pack a day. Or for some people, of course, it's I love beer and I don't mind having one or two, but I'm going to drink excellent quality craft beer. Yeah. For me, it's, it's mostly I love beer because of the, the variety and the flavor. So probably... 90% of when I drink beer, it's going to be craft beer. Yeah. You know, either good quality. And I'll typically drink one or two, you know, uh, an, at a time. Um, you know, every once in a while, you know, if you're just sitting around doing whatever, you, you get a six pack of some yeah. basic, basic beer and drink that. But for me, it's usually one or two beers, um, good quality beer. It, it, uh, I get some good flavor. Um, I sip it, you know, like, you know, it might take me an hour, hour and a half to get through a beer. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just like the flavor of the variety of it. And I like matching it up with food too. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. It it. Especially on the weekend when you got time to cook and that type of thing. I, I really enjoy kind of trying to find a beer that matches up with, uh, what, you know, whatever it is, cooking, grilling, stews, whatever. I, w I would like people that watch this video later to put it in the comments what what that means to you does, does mm -hmm. i love beer mean that i drink an 18 pack of bud light a week a day or mm -hmm. you know or is it you know that no i just love good craft beer uh good quality beer mm -hmm. you know because it's funny because um anytime i it depends on where you're doing that kind of uh beer conversation right like mm -hmm. if if i'm at a sports bar and i'm trying to have a beer conversation on how you know do you love beer oh yeah man i love beer shit i i, I go through a 30 pack and you know what i'm saying i'm like <laughs> yeah. okay and then and then if i'm at a brewery mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a good craft brewery, and you and you mentioned, you know, that you love beer. Mm -hmm. It's it's a whole 
it, it can be, it, it's not always, but it can be a different conversation like, oh yeah, man, are you kidding? Uh, you know, I like this particular beer and this style and mm -hmm. this one, this is my favorite here. And this is, you know, I like these type of uh, hops and, you know, um, it, it, it can be, it, it, it means different stuff, yeah. right? Oh yeah, you know? definitely, it definitely does. Yeah. And if you're, like in a CVS or something or outside of a Walgreens and you happen to uh, mention the, the love of beer, you're going to get more than likely that 30 pack reaction. Right yeah. Bring the dolly. I want to, I want to load up with the cases of uh, Corona or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, you know, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to raise that question uh, next time in, in the mm -hmm. share of beer because there's a, uh, uh, it, it means it, we all drink the same thing sometimes mm -hmm. and it, it's just for different reasons. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. For, for some people, it's just, it just means something different, you know, for yeah. some, yeah. for some, it's just, you know, you're drinking it and you're tasting everything and you're thinking about those ingredients. You're thinking about where they came from. You're thinking about what it took to raise them, uh, you know, what 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 you could make differently, how you could make it differently. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then for for others, it's it's an escape, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I needed this beer. And sometimes it's that for everybody, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's. I just finished uh, driving in an hour and a half of traffic, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to get these two beers down my throat as quickly as possible <laughs> because I need, I need and to deal with the rest of the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a shot of tequila, right? You mm -hmm. know, so it's uh, it, I, and I know for me, uh, you, you know, I'll, I uh, I start having in in certain environments, you know, I start having uh a couple of those Miller lights and I'm, I'm going to be calling for a shot of tequila, <laughs> you know, I just, uh, you know, oh, love, yeah. love a good shot of something at least, you know, every other beer or so, you know, I'm like, eh, get us all shots, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know it, I think for most people it's, uh, everybody has a little different reason why they enjoy beer and then but that changes depending on mm -hmm. you know the time of year the day you know if, you, if you've got time and you know you're not worried about how you feel the next day and you've had you know whatever and you just want to right. hang out with your friends and watch football or whatever you're going to probably enjoy beer a little differently than if you're just sitting on a weeknight you got to go to work the next morning, but you want to have a beer or two. You know, it's going to be a little different, a little different uh, approach to it. Yeah. And now I'm going to be up against that sort of scenario sooner or later. I'll finally be a, I'm not going to call it a regular Joe, but I'll, I'll, I'll have more. Well, I'll, I'll be working on the daylight side of things sooner or oh, later okay. here. Pretty, okay. Some of the changes that are happening with my workplace are starting. Okay. So um, uh, I have felt some of those new changes last week. So oh, okay. um, as they progress through this, it might take a few months, but uh, uh, they're finally going to come out with some daytime schedules for me now that'll affect this show as well so mm -hmm. depending on what the uh days and hours are if it's a regular m m you know monday through friday thing and if it's the same hours i have but now they're during the day i don't know when i'd be able to do this show yeah, yeah. well move it to a weekend maybe yeah we might uh have to try something like that mm -hmm. um May, probably more than likely move it to like a Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know what that new schedule is going to be. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But yeah. if it was, then that would be kind of cool as well because then I could finally, you know, have a beer on the share of beer mm -hmm. again, you know. So, <laughs> well, uh, you've been, been kind of, that was one of the reasons you went, you moved to, to Phoenix was to kind of change it up a little bit. Yes. Uh, and uh, you're, you're going on a, Almost a, a little over a year, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's been over a year. Um, the end of July was a year, mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's been a, a year, yeah, and mm -hmm. and then a a year in this hotel too. So <laughs> yeah. you can 
you're gonna when you leave there, you're gonna go. Oh, I kind of miss this place now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, you know, it. They, they've been nice to me here. They've been mm. real good to me, so I can't. Uh, I can't complain. You know. Um, yeah. But uh, and and <clears throat> it is in a uh, an area where there's a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. You know, it's definitely that makes it convenient. But uh yeah. yeah, we'll see we'll see how that goes as you know, for the show and stuff. But uh um it would be kinda nice to get off of work and have a beer. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <clears throat> like some people do, you know, they they're on their way home and they're like, I'm gonna stop in for a couple of quick beers here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and it it would be nice to do that. I don't get to do that and i have let me i'm trying to think when was the last time i was able to do that i, I don't know that i've ever been able to do that i uh, think you've I've been on you've been on the overnight shift for five or six years almost right i mean because you switched when i first started joining these you were you were just transitioning weren't you you were kind of working yeah i was working at 3 a.m mm-hmm no, those are the, those are the, yeah. When I was on 3 a.m., I was on 3 a.m. actually for f- five years, almost five years. Okay. And yeah, that, yeah, you were reminding me about that. So that was a time when, yeah, I used to go to happy hour, man. Oi. Yeah, yeah. I used to. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, we would, because I would get off work at uh, 1130, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes 130. But most of the time, eleven thirty. So you'd be able to hit those lead specials, you know, at mm-hmm. Hooters or wherever. And oh yeah, those were ridiculous. I mean, yeah. those were yeah. That was yeah. yeah. You'd, hit, you'd hit that, and uh, you get home at five or six. Oh. Go to sleep at eight, <laughs> eight to two. Go to work. Oh yeah, you'd hit those uh, you know those bikini top Wednesdays and all that sort of thing, you know. And it's oh. Man, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was. Bikini uh... <laughs> top Wednesdays. I've never seen that. Or Thursdays, or I remember there was a, a bikini top day at some place, oh. and then there was. Um, oh, what was it? God, there was all these little things to get you there for their lunch specials, right? Okay. Um, and then before you know it, you're there for lunch, but then it runs into the happy hour. Yeah. And uh, it was a that was a dangerous shift. Yeah, I was on that shift for almost five years. That was a bad shift. Bad. <laughs> you got off, yeah, you got off right at like lunchtime, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you didn't oh. have to be at work until three the next morning, so you could go to lunch, have a few beers. Go yeah. home, hang out for a while, go to bed at like eight or nine, wake up yeah. five or six hours of sleep, wake up and go to work the next day. Yeah. You just it was a bad you know, and, and the problem is, you know, it, when you're when you're married, you don't have no adult supervision. Yeah. So, you know, you're <laughs> your 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 supervisor isn't there with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah, because she worked during the day, didn't she? I mean, yeah, she was there all day. So she'd come up to work and you'd be like, wow, it was a bikini top Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was, and it, you know, those were the early days of this show, so we were able to really, oh, oh, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are some crazy shows. Yeah, we were able to really tie it on pretty yeah. good back then. But, yeah. uh, what are you watching now? It's all on stick cam, and that's all gone now. It doesn't exist oh. anymore. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, those were all the or the early days. That was before you know this, and so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, stick cam and uh, Skype, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I'm glad all that wasn't recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was fun, but yeah, that was that was good. That it was in the past. <laughs> And, and you know those were also some of the early days of uh, a lot of a lot of us beer reviewers on YouTube, mm-hmm. and so um, and it's kind of sad because some of those guys, I don't, I don't, you, you know, you wish you knew what happened to them, mm-hmm. um, and some of the some of the guys we do know what happened to them, and it, you know, it's you know everyone's got a different fate, right? Like mm-hmm. everyone's got a different. Uh, 
so some of some of those stories are sad and some are some are good uh i remember mm-hmm. remember we had the guy that would join us from uh, where was he at like north dakota or something he would fly do you remember that he would oh yeah he was a guy in montana montana yeah, yeah. um what was his name not jeff but yeah he was up in from montana he was a school bus driver and yes. he flew uh and he flew like those ultralights yes like yes and ball. and he was so far from a store or anything he had to brew his own beer mm-hmm. J- just to have a beer he would brew his own beer yeah he had like make a run into town buy all his ingredients to brew beer for the next three months so yeah he could, like actually have beer yeah <laughs> Wild, really wild, and then and then he would, uh, yeah, fly fly the what do you call them, ultralights? Is that what you? Yeah, it was a little wild. Uh, yeah, yeah. That guy was something else, man. Yeah, he was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I it, there is that right. There's there's people that like love beer so much mm-hmm. that they actually have to brew it themselves just to have a beer because they can't get to. I mean, they're they're pretty remote, you know. So yeah. they they have to brew beer. Yeah, because he would brew, he would get like recipes and ingredients from other uh, breweries that that he mm-hmm. liked, mm-hmm. And, and brew a variety of that beer uh, mm-hmm. for himself, it, it, macro or not. Like he would, he, you know, he would, mm-hmm. you know, make his own just basic light lagers and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and that's how I got away from brewing because I could brew my own beer, and it's fine. But why do that when I can like drive three miles down and Go to a beer store that has two thousand different beers to pick from. And <laughs> why brew when I can buy it? You know, Cause I, I just don't have enough. I guess I have time to brew, but I'd rather spend my time doing other stuff and enjoying the beer rather than brewing, brewing, brewing. Like developing film, I'd rather do that and enjoy a beer than brew a beer. And that's literally always been my thing. You know that because I, you mm-hmm. know, I. I've had a lot of people tell me over the years, oh, no, you're going to brew. You're going to brew, man. You, you love beer. You lo-. And I'm like, yeah, I, lo- I, you know, I like soda too, but I don't make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I like a, a lot of stuff. I love to cook. Mm-hmm. But I still go out and eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, yeah. I, 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 I'm not always going to – I don't feel any need, any desire to brew beer. I just mm-hmm. don't. I don't. I, I I love beers. I love everything that goes into. I love having the conversation. I love mm-hmm. talking about where the ingredients come from, how they're grown, and all that. But I've just had no desire to brew it. I mean, yeah. like you said, you know, it's a. Uh, I mean, I, <clears throat> I I I love tacos, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I typically You're not buy making them. tortillas. Yeah, I'm You're not making tortillas. tortillas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're they're cheap enough. I can just go, you know, buy a dozen if I want. You know, mm-hmm. speaking okay. of which, they don't hardly make dozen tortillas anymore, right? No, they like all you, come in like thirty six packs. Those big, big ass plastic bags full of. Tortillas. They either come in a huge pack like that, or they come in a ten pack now. Sometimes mm-hmm. even an eight pack. Have you noticed that? Like, it's hard to find, and and if you do find a dozen tortillas, it's like from a local to t- I mean a really small local mm-hmm. tortilla maker you know it, it, it typically the man they're in like a 10 pack or an 8 pack mm-hmm. you yeah. know and yeah. it's like what the hell's up with tortillas man like how come someone having this conversation you know <laughs> it's kind of like uh, I go to Krispy Kreme now and they don't give you the free donut when you walk in there you know what I'm saying oh, they I'm don't? Like, I haven't been to Krispy Kreme in a while but they don't give you free donuts to sample I'm mm-hmm. like, what's up with the free donut, bro? I, I, I walk in the door, I'm supposed to get the free donut. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. Uh, I guess they figure they sell enough donuts without giving the free, without giving the free ones out. I guess. Well, I don't even hardly go to Crispy anymore. Hell, they got some really good uh, independent donut makers here, man. So I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, it, Krispy Kreme screwed up when they closed all those Krispy Kremes, and and then they forced you to get your donut somewhere else, and everyone did. Yeah, you know? yeah, they they were. Um, Pam was saying they uh, they were doing something. They were like cooking the books or doing something weird mm-hmm. in order to expand as fast as they did, and it caught up with them. And then they had to then they had to consolidate and then try to grow again. And by when, like you said, when they did, did the uh, consolidation, people were like, "Screw it, I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts or I'm going to Bob's Donuts in the corner or whatever." Yeah, right. Yeah, 
you know, yeah, and, and that, you know, a lot of people found their donuts somewhere else. So <clears throat> I think that's it for today. Uh, Share a beer 343 is in the books. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chicken Etiquette 101, man. I think that is a show title. And, uh, uh, you know, don't take a man's last piece of chicken. Yeah, that's... You that, learned think... anything today. Don't take a man's <laughs> last piece of chicken. <laughs> Yeah, that'll serve you well in life. Yeah. <laughs> because is that last piece of chicken worth it, man? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you could you, you, you could say I'm get... dying for that last piece of chicken, and that might be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that might be it, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, brother. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. We'll see you next see week. Ya. Take care, Joe. All right. Bye.